Hi everyone, Alex with Beam It Up here. Today we're going to talk about Revit Keynotes. We're going to start with Element Keynotes and I'm going to show you how they're stored within the Revit parts. Um, we're going to talk about the difference between the type families and the flexing families and how Keynotes behave a little differently between those two. Um, we're going to create a little uh, Keynote schedule we are going to modify a keynote file so i'm going to show you uh, how, how they're formatted and and how they're organized uh, we're going to edit one of those uh, keynote files using excel we're also going to edit a keynote symbol so that we can use it as users keynotes which is a different type of keynote and i'm going to give you a few tips and tricks along the way see you in revit This is just a note to remind you that if you're watching this, it means that you're not currently at bimitup.com. So you're only getting partial content. If you want the real deal, you can go to bimitup.com and you can book some training there, or you can purchase videos either individually or you can buy a whole course. All right, so what I have open here is a floor plan view for fire protection. So I'm going to do a window tile so you see what's going on here. So coming out of my stamp pipe, I have a floor control assembly. And then out of my spring main, I have this groove reducing fitting coming down into an elevator isolation valve. And then I'm running on the ceiling space again into the shaft and to my elevator spring -ter. So this this uh, testing background that I have here doesn't have an elevator, so I'm assuming that this, I'm imagining that this uh, little square here is an elevator pit, okay? So if I go back to my floor plan here, and I go into my annotate tab, all the way to the keynotes, and let's, uh, let's study a little bit each, the three of us. So element keynotes, right? This is taking the information out of the element itself. And in this case, this would be a, a sidewall sprinter. And uh, let's say I do the same for my valve. And I can do the same for my three inch floor control assembly. And so where is this information coming from? If you click on your equipment or on your part and you go to edit type you see that under keynote you have this text you can either have a text that you introduce manually or you can take it out of your uh, keynote file uh, by specification or you can associate a parameter if you want in this case let's keep it simple i just added this text here and let's say instead of elevator valve I want, uh, let's say, a cool elevator valve, right? So that information will be transferred to my keynote, and this is being read directly from the element, okay? And this particular valve, I took it from Victolic and I modified it a little bit. But what I want to show you here is that if I were to create um, Let's say this is my sprinkler line here, right? And I want to add another one like this. So I create similar and I click here. If I introduce another keynote, an element keynote, and I click here, see it is the same cool elevator valve, right? So if you come here, this is a, a, a type of family that flexes with the pipe size. So if I were to create instead of a one inch line, it says a two inch line, right? From here to here. And I do create similar. And then I click here. This valve here, if we go all the way down to the dimensions properties. You see that the nominal diameter is one inch. Whereas this one here, 
the nominal diameter is two inches. However, um, if I come here to my keynote and I try to do another keynote, it uh, it kind of migrated with the the valve itself because it's flexing with the size. On the other hand, um, let's say instead of this valve, by the way, if you delete an element, that keynote should be deleted um, with it. And it kind of makes sense. You don't want to have text floating around. Uh, now, a comparison would be, let's let's use this other valve. This one's from Nipco. And in this case, I only have a few sizes loaded. And that's fine. Let's, uh, let's just uh, use this one here. So this was the one inch. And then, and this would be the two inch. Now what I want to see is how this behaves. If I come here and I do edit type and I go down to my keynotes, right? And I say valve one inch, right? And now I try to use my keynote for this valve. I have a valve one inch, right? Now if I come and try to do the same thing for this one, it's it's popping this my, my keynote file. Why? Because I have nothing on this particular type. See, this is a two inch. So if I go here to edit type, under the two inch connection size, this one here, if I come here to keynotes, this was empty. So I would have to fill that in with some other information per type so that I'm able to display an element keynote like this. Now let's copy this a couple of times. So we run a little experiment here and then we try to use our keynotes again. And then if you were to click here, right? And you do select all instances visible in view, it's selecting only this type, right? The type that is one inch. Now, if you were to select the keynote itself and try to do the same thing, select all instances visible in view, notice that all of them get selected. So it has nothing to do with the element itself. What you're selecting here is the keynote tag, right? So if you were to select all instances in view and try to create, uh, change the type, you would be changing the type of all the keynotes that you're adding. And this, if you wanted to see what's going on inside, you would do edit family. And then um, up here, you'll see those types, right? So we're not gonna get into that. So what happens in Revit's ideal world? Let's go to a plumbing sheet, my drainage sheet for level one. I'm gonna go into my sheet view and uh, let's try to tag this laboratory. For I'm, I have it tagged as L1, so I have it displayed on my schedules with all the information. But let's say I wanted to use a keynote for this laboratory here. I would come here to my keynotes. I would do element keynote, just like we did before. And then by default, Revit would pop this uh, specifications keynote. So you would go under plumbing, division 22, maybe plumbing fixtures, and maybe this laboratory, right? Beautiful, right? And then you go to your mop sink, you would do the same. And now you would go under division 22, again, plumbing fixtures, and I think it's, uh, there you go, mop sink. Very nice. Now, that's in a Revit ideal world. The reality we all know that is, you know, for, for this to happen, you would have to have your specifications perfectly in sync 
with your with your keynotes and your tags and your drawings and sometimes that is simply not possible or is even not not practical for example let's say you're doing a a, a one story one office you know the 200 square foot office renovation then you would have to pull out a, a, a complete spec book for that little renovation and that's simply not profitable right so Another option that we can do for keynotes is uh, you can do a combination of all of these, but one option that I want to present to you is the user keynotes, this one right here. But before that, let's create a keynote legend. So for that, we go here into views, and then under legend, keynote legend. And then we can keep this name or we can call it, let's say, AJS Keynote Legend, right? And then by default, we have these two uh, fields, the key value and the keynote text. That's fine. So let's just click accept. And now we have, see this, the key value will be referring your spec section. And then the keynote text is simply lavatory or mop sync right and then we have the the other three key values for my fire protection which i i grab directly from the model right from the element itself so the three inch flow control assembly the cool elevation elevator isolation valve and the sidewall sprinkler right here now let's go back to our plumbing sheet and let's just drop it like somewhere around here so we would go here under legends and it's actually under legends don't don't look for it under schedules and this would be it right so i can drag and drop it here and these are my key values and my key note text one thing i want to point out is that once you have dropped your first keynote for one element let's say this this lavatory here uh, if you try to do the same again for the same element placed somewhere else, another instance of that element, see, you wouldn't have to search through that uh, file again. Now, if, you, if we're doing, for example, a urinal, which we haven't yet, yes, it pops up. So we would have to come here, Division 22, Plumbing Fixtures, and then somewhere I should find a urinal. Yeah, there you go. Now let me format this a little bit better. Let's take it up here and let's uh, probably adjust this width a little bit. And that should be good for now. Now let's let's use this same keynote schedule in um, in level two and in Revit 2020 I think you can copy and paste from one sheet to the other I don't think we can do this I'm in 2019 right now so let's give it a shot yep now let's create a couple more keynotes here So I can come here to annotate and again let's do a couple of lavatories notice that it remembers that and let's do a toilet there we go I guess if you wanted to do the same with a flushometer valve here, you could do something like that, you know, like manual, electronic, etc. But again, this is uh, I'm, the way we do it in plumbing is uh, by a plumbing fixture schedule in which you have a fixture tag. And then that is associated to a schedule that tells you, you know, which type of flushometer valve it has and everything else. Now let's take a look at our, our keynote schedule here, right? 
Notice that, yes, nice, we have the lavatories and we have the urinal and the water closet, but we have, you know, that mop sink from the first floor. We even have the floor control assembly and the elevator valve for the pit at the first floor. We shouldn't have that here, right? So how do we clean this up? And I mean, some people like doing that, so they would have like a super long list of all the notes that they're using. But I don't think it's it's fair to the reviewer to have to search through all that. So I think if you clean it up, it's a little bit nicer. So to clean up the key notes, to filter them by sheet, you simply have to get into your schedule and then under filter, click this little checkbox here. And then if we go back, you see that everything else that is not pertaining to level two, a drainage plan is gone. You know, it's always a good idea to have at least one that shows all your keynotes. It doesn't necessarily have to be on a sheet. You can have it just the schedule for your reference purposes, just to make sure that everything's in, in order. So again, this is only showing this two, lavatory and water closet, because those are the only two things that we have referenced here. But if you go back to the schedule, you have everything. And then if you go back to level one, you also have that mop sink that we referenced. And if you were going to the fire protection sheet, you will see that elevator valve and the sprinkler. So let's go to our settings here, keynote settings. This file that you see here, the text file, you can go browse and change it, right? Or you can create your own. In this case, this is the out of the box that I just renamed but this is where all the information is being pulled out from. And this is typically installed in your machine on the C drive. So if I copy that file path and I hit enter, I get this. So this is that text file where all the information is being pulled out from. Notice that it's pretty, pretty extensive, right? Pretty detailed. Uh, and the way this is organized, let me go down to, let's say, division, division 23, 20, division 22, which is plumbing, is not the one that we want to look at. It's not the cleanest one uh, out of the box in Revit. But for example, division 9, let's go to 0951. Uh, there you go. So, so here under acoustical ceilings, you see that all the acoustical ceilings are grouped together. They're nested and the way they nest it is they tab and they um, succeed by this number, which is the number that precedes the acoustical ceiling division. So you, can, you have two numbering methods. One of them is by keynote, which is what we currently have. But again, sometimes this is not even practical to do that because you would have to, you know, this is assuming that your your plans are always accompanied by a, by a perfectly matched spec book, even for small things. So sometimes I like to do, you know, by sheet, and then this would have just a numbering system. So if you have three different keynotes, you have them listed here, and then this would be the keynote text. When you do that, then your keynotes change, right? And you can you can edit the line work around this. We'll probably do that a little later. Another way of approaching keynotes is the following. I'm gonna go into my keynote settings and I'm gonna change to my other set of keynotes. And here what I'm gonna do, let, let's let me get activate my view, select my keynote, select all in project, and just delete them all. Let's go back to our schedule as we expected, completely empty. So let's go ahead and create another one to see if we can modify it. So I'll take this one and notice that. This one's boxed large, this one's boxed small. 
and this is the keynote number only so let's let's see edit family let's click on this tag right here and this label and uh, let's modify that label to a sample value of let's say zero zero and now I would just take this line work out and let's go to create line and let's do a little circle here just eyeballing it here something like that that's pretty good let's uh, click here and let's reduce the size of it and I'm gonna keep it opaque for now uh, but I'm gonna change the width factor here to 0 0.75 I'm gonna keep it aerial 330 seconds so that's good and um, let's just reload into our project that's looking pretty good so another way of using keynotes or a different type of keynote is the user keynote. So let's do the same valve we were doing before, right? And now it's prompting me. I mean, this is a simple file that I just created for explanation purposes. But in this case, this is a uh, fire protection. We have our note here, FP5, which is an indicating isolation valve with tamper switch, whatever. So. I just placed it here, right? And now if you go out into your sheet, this is my note right here. So it's just a matter of reformatting this. So let's take this here. I think that looks pretty good actually. Maybe a little bit more, something like that. and then you would want this so let's uh, clean this up a little bit mm. under formatting we probably want this centered and uh, let's see what else maybe appearance we want to take the grid lines off let's see that's a little better and now I notice that I have to edit this note a little bit. So in order to do that, I'm gonna go and paste into my browser that text file location. And then I, I find that this, if I open it in Notepad, it's pretty uncomfortable to read something like this. So instead of doing that, I'm gonna navigate to that location and I'm gonna open it with Excel. So I open that file with Excel and as you can see it's a lot easier to read now i can edit my note right so now this is very important you don't want to save this as an excel s file because you won't be able to read it well in revit so what you want to do is you always want to save as you navigate to that same location and then there you make sure that you select text Once you make that change, you need to make sure you reload. You have to go to Keynote Settings and then just hit here, Reload. Now, if you're serious about your professional training, go ahead and visit us at beamitup.com. At beamitup.com, we offer professional training on mechanical, electrical, plumbing, and fire protection systems. And we can also train you, obviously, in Autodesk platforms like Revit, and Auto Academy P. So go ahead and visit us at beamitup.com or contact us directly at the email you see on the screen and let us know how we can help you get professionally developed. And one last thing I want to show you is that if, if I go to my 3D fire protection riser, you'll see that I added one of these valves with a bottom of a pit sprinkler here. And then on the top floor, I am, I'm going to add another valve. I haven't added it yet, 
but then that one is uh, is uh, controlling a sidewall sprinkler, but now at the top of the elevator shaft. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tag them differently. Right now I'm just creating similar. See if we can get this out of the way real quick. Now I'm going to, this should be oriented the other way, but it doesn't matter. So um, I go back to my floor plan, right? And this is level one. Notice that I have one tag for this and I'm going to create another keynote here for the bottom of my sprinkler. And I know I have, I have open on my other screen. I have this open, right? So I know that this is bottom of the elevator. So this is FP6. So I'm going to go to FP6 here, right? And now I'm going to go to the top level, which is going to be the third floor. And here I'm going to tag, notice that the tag, the, the, um, the keynote for the, um, for the valve is the same one. So it should be the this one here fp5 so in the on the on level one is fp5 as well it's the same tag one you see but then now for the sprinkler head itself let me move this out of the way it will be now a different one from the one we had on the first floor in this case i know that this one's the top of the shaft so it's gonna be this one here, top of elevator hoistway. So this is FP7. So I come here to FP7. And now notice that Revit is smart. He knows that, let me go to the sheet. He knows, let me drop the schedule here. He knows that this sheet only has tag one for the for the tampered switch uh, valve and then tag two would be for the elevator sprinkler because everything else is naked so here it is one is the indicated isolation valve and then two is the sidewall sprinkler head whereas on the first floor you will have tag one for the elevator isolation valve then I had tagged in this floor, the floor control assembly. So that would become two. And then three would be now the sidewall sprinkler at the bottom of the elevator hoistway. All right. And again, I'm leaving the formatting to you to meet your company standards. But a couple of things I would do is maybe, you know, go here under sorting and insert a blank line between each group of lines and maybe here is under appearance maybe uh, you don't want to show the headers obviously rename maybe uh, fire protection notes and that would look a little better something like that one last thing, let's say I want to create uh, an overall isometric for fire protection, for example. And now I want to tag those with my keynotes. And in this case, I'm going to do all of them. So let's say I do this, the floor control assembly. Then I do this which is that elevator control valve. And then I do this, which is that bottom of the pit sprinkler. Yeah. And then I come up here and then this is gonna be another floor control assembly. And then this one's gonna be another 
elevator valve and then this one is going to be the sprinkler at the top of the elevator shaft so in this case if I were to bring in my schedule I mean that the formal way of doing it would be to drag and drop it on the sheet but I think this is working in 2019 so I'm just uh, copying a line to current view you can see how I have one two three four and I have all my notes here and if you have enjoyed this video make sure you like it down there subscribe to the channel hit that bell so you get notified Thank you for watching and see you on the next video.